Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the NCDA podcast for drafting the women's match competitors. I am Rebecca Shackle. I am your director of female engagement and retention. I'm also a Michigan State head coach, and I am joined today by the ever amazing Catherine. I will let her introduce herself, though. So Catherine, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Catherine, I'm previously an OSU player um, and now also coaching their team at National. So pretty excited to, to start the draft. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. This is very excited. For those that don't know, Catherine was the previous female MVP and has made a very decorated career for herself at Ohio State. Um, we're very excited to have you as another captain for this, and I look forward to well, I guess playing you on Saturday at <laughs> the women's match since we're competing. All right. Now, before we get started with our women's match, we did just want to have a quick content plug for some updates. First and foremost being that the women's match is also going to be followed up at lunch. So 1230 to our 1245 to 1:30 as a women's networking seminar for everybody to come if they would like network with all the other women that are in the NCDA and have a few roundtable discussions to decide where we go from there with the league. We just have the ultimate goal to make it more inclusive and accepting for all women to join the sport. Catherine and I are very much advocates for the NCDA, and we know that if we can get more women to come into this sport and grow, it would be nothing but benefits for this league. Um, Catherine, is there anything you want to say about the networking seminar? Uh, no, I think this is just going to be a great opportunity for all of us to finally be able to connect. So um, if you're on the fence about it, just go for it. <laughs> yes. Speaking of that, too, if you are on the fence about attending nationals as well, this women's schedule is not set in stone. We will gladly pick up additional women that decide they want to come and play. It is all just for fun to get together and be able to have time on the court to share together. So if you are at any point hesitant, we both, and I'm sure Catherine echoes this as well, would love to have you out there and in no way, shape or form, do you have to feel like you would not be good enough or not have the type of playing time with us out there. This is all just to get out and have fun together. Uh, last thing we have for you with that as well, before we go into our women's draft, uh, there is going to be a new updated way to vote for your players of the game for both all-star games and the women's match on Saturday, April 9th. So with that, we are calling them our game changers. And what your game changers essentially will do for voting is while the all-star game and the women's match are going on, you will tune in to the live stream and you can vote in the stream for your favorite player. That favorite player with the most votes by the end of it will then get a feature afterward, a nice little post game interview and everything. Uh, so you can do that by going into the stream and using a hashtag game changer and then that person's last name. So for example, Game Changer Maze or Game Changer Chapel, or we are looking at the possibility of having a poll up on the stream to be able to just live click and vote for your player of the game while we're watching. Um, with that, Catherine, are there any other last sentiments you want to get in before we start this? I don't think so. I think you got it. All right. Further ado, once we have gotten through our content plug there, we are going to go ahead and move forward with our draft. Similar to those that may have watched Wes and Colby with the All-Star Game Draft, we are going to do a snake draft at first, so I will be taking first overall. Catherine will then get second and third pick, and we'll do a one and one pick after that until we get through the list. Again, to reiterate, if your name is not on this list and you want to play, feel free to reach out to the NCDA page or myself or Catherine, and we will gladly get you added in. But without further ado, my... First overall pick I would like to take for the women's draft would be Anna Mullenbeck from Miami. She has been voted a captain for them this year, along with Ellie Shifter, and she has been just an absolutely incredible player for Miami. I love what she has been doing for their team as a whole and just seeing that women representation and leadership. She's a very solid player with amazing court IQ, and I'm very excited to have her here. Yeah, great pick. Um, and with that, I'm going to take Ellie as my first pick. Um, just to, to echo what you've said, these two have just really carried Miami's team, um, especially after they lost so many incredible seniors during COVID, and they've really been able to keep it going. And so two first great picks. Um, 
Cool. And then as my next, I'm going to take Akron's Alexis Schultz. Um, she has really come up as a, as a key player for Akron, um, making their starting lineup. And she's always on the, the throw line, really making a presence. So um, excited to see her at the ladies match. Yeah, great pick in Alexis. I love Alexis's fearlessness out there. I love that she has just been incorporated into Akron's lineup and has been able to be a key piece for them in plays. I think that's a great pick for you. Uh, with me, I'm going to delete Anna's name really quick so we don't forget where we're at. So with my second overall pick, I am definitely going with a homer here. She <laughs> has been absolutely amazing at practice. I'm going to take Ava Boley from MSU. She is an absolute catching machine and she is always looking to learn or put herself out there. She does not care who is in front of her. She will gladly close that space and run you down to try and cover any sort of team or apply pressures as needed. Uh, Ava is definitely my girl. I'm very excited <laughs> to see her out here in her first ladies match. Yeah, I think that's the case for a lot of these women. This is the first one um, and it's just going to be so great to see them all together. Um okay. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to take Bowling Green's Rennie Kaiser next. Um, I played with Rennie in Erie for a USA Dodgeball tournament. Um, and she just is also very fearless. <laughs> she is throwing her body to make catches. Um, and she has this great sidearm. So um, I'm eager to see her play here too. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that we're going to echo that a lot throughout here. A lot of people might not realize, but these women on this roster are very fearless in what they do. They know that to make a name for themselves, they're running and going out, trying to get whatever they can. Uh, I'm very excited to see all of them play. But with that, for my third overall, I'm going to take Maryland's Bryce Bathurst. Again, another incredible player. Yes, another incredible player. Great arm, great court IQ, always looking for catches. I have really enjoyed watching Bryce play. Mm-hmm. And she's experienced in the ladies match. Um, she's had a few nationals, so she's definitely, she definitely knows what she's doing. Um, yes. Cool. Okay. Next, I am going to take uh, Nicole Kudic from Akron. I might just stop pronouncing last names here. Um, but um, no, it's great to see her at, at the war um, a couple, a couple months ago. Um, but she's also pushing up. Um, she looks like she's really uh, comfortable um, with her team, and, and that's huge, having that confidence. So, yeah. Another great pick. Nicole is a very solid person for Akron. Uh, with my pick next, I'm going to go with Saginaw's Danielle Kuby. Danielle has made a solid name for herself on Saginaw's roster and what I think is a very underrated Saginaw team. She's mm -hmm. always pushing herself out there. Again, one of those defensive mindsets, looking for catches whenever she can, but is not afraid to throw. I'm very excited to have Danielle out there. Yeah. Um, cool. I think next I'm going to take Cleveland State's Sky. Um, also saw her at the war pushing up with everyone else. Um, yeah, really working hard with the pump fakes, which can do so much for your team. So I'm um, excited to have her join. Great pick as well. I really love seeing that lone woman out on the court, which we know all too well half the time, but yeah. whenever you see that lone woman out there, you know, she's out there for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, going off of that pick of Sky, I think I'm going to get a steal here. I'm going to take Carolyn Curley from UNL and I'm going to put her in. Another name that I have heard a few times out of that Midway region, Carolyn is it's just a solid player that is nothing but benefits for that stack UNL team. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. Okay. With that, I'm going to take Cincinnati's Casey. Um, I think she's a recent addition to the team, but joining Cincinnati's team, I mean, you, <laughs> you're surrounded by some really incredible players. So I know she's exposed um, – to some some good gameplay. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, Casey's a, probably a steal there. I feel like if you're joining the number one team and you're able to make that roster and travel with them, you've mm -hmm. got to have something behind you. I have yet to have the honor of watching her play, but I'm very excited for that. Yeah. Based off of Casey, then I am going to go ahead and take our lone Penn State girl up here, Abigail Coza. I again apologize if I'm butchering anybody's last names here. I'm probably going to stop pronouncing last names as well <laughs> and just say where they're from. 
but on a, again, another very solid Penn State team in terms of overall talent and court IQ and strategy. I think she'll have a really good chance to stand out in this women's match. Mm hmm. Um, cool. Okay. With that, I'm going to take the other sky <laughs> from Kentucky. Um, I've seen her play at Cincinnati and she is a voice for their team, um, really helping communicate calls. And I think she'll be very vital. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Love that. Um, going off of that, let's see here. I think what I'm going to do here, pair our Maryland girls together. I am going to take Cecilia Swart out. I think if these two have some team chemistry together going through Maryland, Bryce and Cecilia are going to make some trouble on our women's match. <laughs> I'm going to follow that um, and take Zoe from Akron. Um, seeing all the Akron girls together, they're the ones who came up with the Dodgettes term, and I just think that's so great. Um, they're all really close, um, so I'd like to see them make some plays together. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. Okay, with that then, I'm gonna follow that up. I'm gonna take KB Bondi from SVSU. KB's coaches had nothing but great things to say about her. She, again, gets some playing time for Saginaw. And like I said earlier with um, taking Danielle, KB is on a very underrated Saginaw team and I think could really make some noise out here and show off her skill sets. Mm -hmm. Cool, with that, um, I'm going to add Paige Willis from BGSU. Um, just another pairing of those teams, her and Rennie. Um, but then also BG has really come in as a force this season. So I know she's also uh, prepared for what's coming. <laughs> That's fair enough there. Yep. BG, I think these teams are going to really realize the amount of talent they have on these women's rosters going through this game by the end of the, by oh, the end of it. Okay. Going off of that, I am going to take Addie Malin from UNL. Again, another pairing for these UNL girls. I really want to see their chemistry when they work together. And again, Nebraska captains have nothing but good things to say about all of their women that they are bringing to this tournament. Very excited to see them work together. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to break it up. I'm going to take Natalie <laughs> from okay. UNL. Um, I think in addition to what you said, they also had Robin as a mentor um, and she was an incredible player. So um, I think they've been able to absorb some of that from her. So I'm excited to see all of them. Yeah, I agree. Robin was phenomenal. It's going to be sad not having Robin at nationals this year since she did only have a half, but I'm very excited to see how Robin was able to mentor these three women and shape them into mm -hmm. it to keep with that UNL legacy of having a very solid woman player on their roster. Yeah. All righty. Well, since you broke it up, I'm going to break it up as well. I'm going to take Emily Nicholson. I'm going to take her from Akron, give a little 3v1 Akron action over here. Nice. See how well she can read her three Dodgette teammates out here to be <laughs> able to make some plays on them. Sounds good. Um, cool. I'm going to take SVSU's Faith next. Um, I don't think I've seen Faith play yet, uh, but I mean, again, she's coming from a strong team and she's got that support of other women on her team, which I think is huge. So that's awesome. Yeah. I think those SVSU girls, again, I don't think they get the credit they deserve, especially being with SAG and all that much and having their four women. Um, all four of them have really great qualities behind them. But for myself, with my pick, I'm going to pick my last homer here, Helena. I'm very excited to see Helena come out. She is nothing but positive vibes for the team and always willing to learn. She is one of the happiest players I have ever seen out there. And it is <laughs> a joy to play with Helena. So I'm very excited for that. I'm excited to see her. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, then I will pick up Maddie as well from SVSU. Um, That'll be cool. Do we have two and two from SVSU on each? I think we do. Okay. Yeah. Danielle. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Danielle and KB, you have Faith and Maddie. Perfect. So we'll split awesome. them up. Uh, again, these are not set in stone for anything besides the ones that were just drafted. If you do decide that you want to come out and participate in this women's match, Catherine and I would be more than happy to have everybody out here. Um, very great vibes to be out here with all these ladies. Everybody is absolutely wonderful to play with. And as another reminder plug, we will have that women's seminar from 1245 to 130. That is going to be in the same classroom that the captain's meeting would be held in later in the day. And that is going to be utilized by Catherine and I just to network 
and make sure that we can start developing a base for how to gain more women's involvement in the league. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Um, Catherine, do you have any final thoughts going into this? Uh, no, I'm just really excited to play again. <laughs> yes. um, it's going to be so much fun. I, oh, yeah. What is it? 2019 was our last Nationals, right? So this yep. will be three years in the making, pretty much. This is very exciting. I'm very excited to get this women's match up and rolling. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Wes and Colby unveiled all of the uh, apparel, correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so if you do have any apparel op uh, questions, the ladies match shirt is also in that. I do not have a copy of that right now to plug in, but we will all also be getting t-shirts. So again, if you want to play, we get shirts and everything too, which is a great thing to add. Um, otherwise, I think that about sums it up for our 2022 women's draft. Yeah. But thank you so much, Catherine, for joining with this and co-captaining this. Very excited for April 9th and 10th. So this is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Becca. Thanks. All right, everybody. We'll see you all on April 9th.